Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Uh, we have an amazing show for everybody today. Uh, Crystal, what do we have today? Also, why do we look so different? What's what's going on? Um, you may have heard there's a bit of a security situation in D.C. And um, the city is so locked down. We honestly weren't sure that we and our crew could get into the studio. So we decided just to play it safe and be remote. So we'll be remote for the week and we'll be back to normal um, next week, assuming everything goes smoothly in the city this week, as we are all hoping. Um, we do have a great show for you, though. We've got Ryan Grimm on. He's talking about the Biden admin and the indications that we're getting about their relationship to tech. We also have Ryan Gerdusky on, so Dueling Ryans. He's going to talk about whether Ivanka is really planning to run for Senate in the state of Florida. Um, but we wanted to start with the uh, the fact that the Biden administration agenda is actually starting to take shape. We're getting a first look at what the priorities will be in the early days. Yeah, it's looking really interesting, Crystal. So let's throw this up there on the screen from NBC News. So you can see that the number one thing that they're proposing there is COVID relief economic stimulus, immigration, and a few executive actions. The executive actions are interesting. Largely, I would say, rolling back some of the things that Trump did when he was in office. And we have a list there. Let's throw some of those tweets in the list that we can see. So we see, first of all, that they're going to be going after a couple of different things. So you can see that they are coming on student debt forgiveness. They're going to continue that pause. They're going to rejoin Paris. They're going to reverse the travel ban. They're going to issue a mask mandate. Just as a reminder for anybody who wants to freak out about this, it's only a mask mandate on federal property. So it basically doesn't apply to you unless you are somehow on, basically unless you're a federal government employee, extending the eviction and foreclosure restrictions. And you can see several other different actions, rejoining the WHO, rescinding the Keystone XL pipeline. That's probably one of the bigger ones that they did. And one of the first things Trump actually did on his first day in office. So ending the national emergency on the border, stopping federal executions. That's been an interesting uh, you know, development here with Trump in the last couple of days. And then reversing the ban on transgender people serving in the military. So largely, Crystal, I would say that in general, outside of uh, the Keystone, actually, even Keystone is, you know, basically reversing Trump. It's the, you know, hit back to Obama 2016, like the last day of his presidency in terms of what they're doing there. Keystone, probably one of the biggest ones um, that he's signing, but it's not like it was really a big campaign issue this time around versus 2016. So it's just kind of interesting to see that that is one of the things that they're doing. Well, that's what was so weird about the Biden campaign is they didn't really run on anything. <laughs> they ran on like this, you know, vague restore the soul of America promise. Um, so it was really kind of a, it's been a surprise and nobody really knew exactly what their priorities would be in the first 100 days. Keystone, I think, is really significant. A lot of activists very heartened to see that as part of the immediate action here um, as, a, as a real tangible win, but also as sort of a symbolic win. But I would put the categories of items that Biden is planning the first 100 days in three buckets. There's the bucket you're just describing, which is like all these executive actions, which are mostly just to roll back the things that Trump did. So there was a lot made of, there was like a piece, I think, in the New York Times that was talking about, oh, he's doing all these executive actions, so many more than what Obama did in her, his first um, uh, couple of weeks in office. But these are really just sort of rollbacks. So it's not like he's making aggressive use of a executive actions to really push forward a progressive agenda. So that's one bucket. The other bucket is emergency response, um, for example, and I think we have a tear sheet on this too. He's just released his plan with regards to getting the vaccine out. Um, very aggressive, ambitious goal here of 100 million vaccines in 100 days. I have no idea whether that's feasible or not, but I will say, and Ezra Klein actually made this point in, a, um, in an op-ed, like when you read through his vaccination plan, it just makes you angry because you realize that all of this is completely obvious yeah. and the Trump administration has been doing like nothing. For example, using potentially the Defense Production Act to ramp up production of the vaccine, um, having FEMA come in and set up uh, vaccination sites across the country, and just aggressively focusing on this, providing funding, et cetera. None of it is rocket science, but as we've discussed here before, if they can actually nail this one thing and do it effectively, or at least significantly more effectively than what the Trump administration has been doing, then I think he's going to be in a relatively good place. Also responding to the emergency, we talked last week about the relief package that he's putting forward. I think he's making a big mistake by, number one, not going for 
actual $2,000 checks. And number two, by trying to push this through quote unquote regular order, which means you need 60 votes rather than a bare majority. And you're like begging Republicans to come on board who are never going to do so. But the overall contour and outline of what he wants through uh, the relief package is, is pretty good. And hopefully he'll ultimately get it through budget reconciliation. So there's, again, there's the executive actions to roll things back. There's the response to the emergency. And then the new piece that we're just learning about that's apparently going to be his first affirmative legislative priority is actually immigration reform. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the part which is really interesting to me because it seems that he's decided that this is going to be the very first thing he pushes alongside of what the vaccine plan and alongside COVID relief. So some of the things that are in there, you can see there, this was in the Washington Post, an eight-year path to citizenship for people who are already here in the United States by January 1st, immediate green cards for DREAMers and TPS recipients, lifting uh, key limits on key employment visas, basically changing around the way family-based migration works in terms of the way that you get a visa and ultimately permanent residency in the U.S., and then a lot of aid to Central America. It's interesting, Crystal, because I think this could be very, this is a very risky move um, for Biden. So the way is, is he's basically doing two sidetrack things, one of which I think is his most important in the way that I wouldn't even say unify the country, but get the country focused on the most important thing, which is we need like daily COVID updates and plans for each individual state. We've talked here before about every school needs to be reopened in 100 days. That's one of his first initiatives, which means more funding, a national you know, plan, education department, and all of that. On the other hand, you know, introducing immigration reform right in the first couple of days very much could tank, I wouldn't say tank and his presidency, but tank any hopes of bipartisanship. Now, obviously, you know, bipartisanship was probably a myth in the first place, but it's basically interjecting a culture war issue right at the very first hundred days of his presidency and setting up for like one of those titanic battles within the Senate. So I think that he really could face a lot of problems and it very much risks undermining the vaccine plan of a hundred days. And second, which is any sort of hope of Marco Rubio, Ted Cruz, Josh Hawley and others working with him on checks already, all the senators coming out strongly against the immigration plan. Something I really worry about, too, which is that by going in, you know, talking about immigration, it's setting it up this terrible dynamic that we had under the Obama administration where Republican governors basically to satisfy their constituents had to reject basically any aid from the Obama administration on Obamacare, Medicaid and other things. So if we ramp the culture war stuff up first, you're going to have a scenario where Ron DeSantis, Governor Greg Abbott and other Republican governors in order to like appear tough against Biden and the administration, which is coming to, you know, invade our borders and all that. They're going to be like, no, we're rejecting your money. We're rejecting all of your assistance. I just think that it's one of those things which could easily flare into a big fight. And this again, this is regardless of where you fall on the issue. I just think that it's one of those things which can absolutely I don't want to say divide us. Trump is obviously the most divisive president. We're already incredibly divided. We'll be talking about that. But it, I think it will undermine his efforts in order to achieve bipartisanship, number one. And two, which is if he wants to be that president with 75% approval rating in his first six months, I think focusing on the $2,000 checks and on stimulus COVID relief would be the first things that I would do. I think you make some important points there. I mean, look, this plan is relatively moderate. I think if you pulled it, I think it would have fairly high support. You know, people support a sort of slow and orderly path to citizenship. There's provision in here for, for dreamers and reinstatement of DACA. Um, the idea is to get at like the root cause of why so many people are coming from Central America in the first place. Like, I think these are all like fairly moderate. This isn't open borders, insane leftist, like ending America kind of a thing. It's a very centrist, moderate Joe Biden type of plan. But I think you're correct that ultimately, look, if you poll voters, and especially if you poll Democratic voters who elected Joe Biden, immigration wasn't the top of their agenda. You're in the middle of a pandemic. You have a ton of crises that are unfolding right here on our soil. And so it's really notable to me that, for example, healthcare, which Again, pandemic going on, lots of people with massive medical bills, lots of people now with pre-existing conditions that are going to be with them their entire lives, um, lots of people who are getting sick and dying. Um, that appears not to really be a priority 
Mm -hmm. for this administration, in spite of the fact that we had a huge conversation during the Democratic primary in particular about various health care plans, and there was really a pledge like this is going to be a priority to at least get a public option through, that seems to not really be mentioned or on the table here at all. The other thing that's, you know, I think really important, really significant, and also could garner bipartisan support is Biden has pledged to really be a friend to labor and reinvigorate the labor movement. And there's none of that here to be seen either. So the prioritization, I think, is interesting. And it's almost like the, I don't want to say it's a mirror image of the Trump administration, because I think the actions that they took at the beginning were both unpopular and even, you know, extraordinarily divisive. But there is something to the fact that they're leading with the culture war issue and it has no prayer of actually getting passed. You have to pass it through regular order. They need 10 Republicans to come on board. That's not going to happen. So you're going to engage in this, you know, in this fight that ultimately you're probably going to lose and it will come at the expense of some of the higher priorities for the American people at this point. I think it's such an important point. And I already know what the critics are going to say, you know, so everybody I'm preemptively telling you to shut up. Nobody here is talking, you know, especially you, you're not saying this is a bad idea. Here's what we're talking about. If you actually want to bring the country together, if you actually want to focus on the things, the 75%, 80% issues, this is not the number one thing that you would want to do in Congress. And I would also say, you know, my observation, which is that the thing that killed immigration reform probably forever under Obama's administration was that rush on the border back in 2014. And I cannot think of anything honestly worse for Biden and for ramping up the culture war issues that we have here in the U.S. than a similar situation um, that would happen in the South. And I think that they very much, if I were them, that'd be the number one thing I would want to avoid in the middle of a pandemic, number one. But number two, in terms of actually trying to garner some popular support and freezing people where they are. I also want to say, I see a lot of Republicans that are grumbling about this. And look, guess what? Immigrate net immigration reform was not something that polled positively in 2017. And guess what? Today, there's actually never been more support than ever for positive, for more immigration levels. You know why? Because of Donald Trump. So if you're a supporter of the immigration restriction uh, movement, which I have been for a long time, you have to understand that Trump actually poisoned the well there for probably 10 to 15 years. And so for a lot of the people who are grumbling around this, You've made your bed. I mean, you know, when we went in with Trump, this is this is ultimately the result that happened. And so when you can see popular support for other measures and more, Trump polarized the issues along culture war lines. And you might have 40, maybe 42 percent of the country, but that's not enough in order to stop things like this. So that was another thing I wanted to make sure that we said here. But just by and large, what I would say is focus on the checks on relief, as you said. Healthcare. We have 30 something million people on unemployment who have lost employer based health insurance. Another thing, if I was them, is I'd be leading with the minimum wage. I'd make this entire fight about a call. I'd make this entire fight about $2,000 checks, minimum wage, and about state and local aid. Then I would move on to healthcare. Every single one of those things is a 75% issue. So this very much could be a rollback. 2014 politics in America, which nobody wants, and especially not what we need right now. Yeah. And I, again, I want to underscore, I support this plan. I want to see it passed. I think it's, I think it's entirely reasonable. I think it's sensible. I think it will improve things in this country. And I think it will help to get to the root of the problems. Although, you know, obviously it's in incredibly complex yes. to try to solve the problems of other countries and keep people from wanting to migrate and wanting to come here. But this is a matter of priorities. You can't do everything. And right now we have so many massive crises on our hands. And you're right, there are a lot of areas where you'll find more like 75%, 80% support if you want to be that bipartisan guy, if you want to put Republicans in a really tough place. Instead, I think that, you know, look, again, this is a plan I support, but I do think that this is a, it's a strange choice in terms of your first affirmative legislative action. And it doesn't really have a prayer of ultimately passing. So it has the likelihood of inflaming tensions, giving Republicans all kinds of like, you know, they'll invent all sorts of insanities around how terrible and this is going to be the end of the country, et cetera. And ultimately, it's not even going to pass. So that's the way I look at it. That's very smart. All right. Very smart. More rising for you after this. <laughs> 